Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Good Girls. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Obviously, Ruby goes to work, and lo and behold, who's there? Uh, but one of the agents that's investigating her and getting her nails done and everything, and I'm like, huh. She was looking at Ruby's purse, but I didn't think too much of it. I was like, what, she, what is she going to do? Like, what was she planning on doing? And then later on, Ruby can't find her phone. And I love that whole bit back and forth of like, uh, did you check your purse? And then she's looking at Annie like, yeah, don't you see it in my hand right now? It's like, did you check your car? I mean, your phone does kind of look like your seat. She's like, I looked. And and, and he's like, oh, I know. Check your pocket. She's like, oh, yeah. Because like, I didn't think to take in my pockets. And they're like, geez, why are you catching the attitude with us? We still have our phones. It's not our fault. And that's, I mean, to be fair, it's like, that's not, I mean, I guess for her, it's like, if they find stuff, because anything they find going forward will be inadmissible, considering the fact of the matter is, it all will be tainted, for like, it'd be evidence from a, what was it, Um, what's the phrase, was it like, poison fruit from the poisonous tree essentially because it's like because all evidence you gain started from you getting something you illegally took like that means all evidence you have gets thrown out but i guess for them it's just like it gives us a starting point we don't have to use the, any evidence we could use this as a starting point gather evidence kind of on its own and then that evidence could be admissible maybe that's her whole point like for her, i think more so than anything is about proving that she's right that she's figured this whole thing out but i even love the fact that she's looking at ruby or her like uh, her partner in crime ends up opening up the phone, hacking into it, and she, she's pissed because she's like, oh, like how many people like hang around, like take this many pictures with their friends and stuff like that. And then he's like, now where did you eat lunch? She's like in a bleachers. Why? He's like, that's exactly my point. Like you don't have many friends. So like for you, it's like seeing people together like all the time is so weird. But what is really nice is when you notice what the pictures are, you're like, some of those pictures, because I swear one of those pictures was like from season one, maybe? No, or maybe, no, no, it was last season, I think. The one where they were like on their way on that bus trip that like Sarah was meeting with those old people. Like they used her like scout stuff as a, an example, like a, as an attempt to like, like do stuff like that. So I think that was like a picture one of the pictures with them on the on that bus so it's basically pictures throughout over the course of the series of them doing shady stuff like almost like commemorating it to a weird extent but luckily they weren't doing anything illegal in said pictures it's just like oh like this moment is tied to this illegal thing that we were doing so on and so forth i mean i think if you look at some of the pictures long enough you can kind of like get that association but obviously like not having a context of it, you're like i don't it doesn't what what does this all mean so it doesn't give them any leeway in that part, but it does give her the thought that, you know, if these are people who hang out this much, it's not just Ruby. They have to know, like, obviously in implementing, like, you know, it's like Abby, I mean, uh, Beth and Annie have to know what Ruby's up to. So that kind of causes some problems because at least she was only looking at Ruby before. Now she's looking at all three of them. So. But uh, that's not just the only thing in this episode. Another thing is the whole Stan situation. Now, even I was like, ooh, Stan, that's some, that's, that's some shit. Like, the fact of the matter is, like, the way he was talking to Ruby, because even Ruby got pissed at him. He's like, the way he was talking to me, I was like, you got me. It was super effed up him giving her an ultimatum and stuff like that. It's like, you got to pay me this money back. He's, he's like, I literally gave that money to them so they could buy a car. They needed a car. You weren't there. And he was like... But that was our my money, and she's like, um, your money. That was our no. I part of that money was my money too. But he's like, all the illegal stuff he did, and it's like the fact is, what pissed him off is like, you made this decision without me. He's like, you're gonna pay me back, and she's like, or else. He's like, you're gonna pay me back. I'm like, for one, I'm like, for one, even I was like, and that's that's the thing. Like, Stan is the most like. Once again, it's such an interesting thing. You rarely see any of the husbands, well, the significant others interact. Like, Greg doesn't really interact with any of them. Like, I mean, to be fair, Greg doesn't pop up that often. But I think over the course of the series, I think we've seen Dean and uh, Stan interact like one time in one episode. I, I don't, it's that infrequent. But the fact of the matter is, Dean kind of has his issues with it, everything, and so does uh, Stan. But I think for Stan, too, it's like because like he committed so many sins for that money. It's just like I've literally sold my soul to get this, to have this money. So for you to make decisions like that behind my back and stuff like that. So he's giving her the cold shoulder at work. It's like, oh, that lotion he gave it to, what's her face? And it's just kind of like, oh, like she's like, oh, I had that same thing. It is yours. And it's like, and like, even he had to catch him. I'm like, dude, come on, dude. 
that's mad disrespectful to talk about talk to Ruby like that. I was like, that's your wife and everything, bro. It's just like I get it. You're pissed at her, but I was like, because and even that's what inspired Ruby to be like, you know what I'm gonna do? I found out how we're gonna launder this money. We're gonna steal it from Stan. And obviously, Annie and Beth were kind of like, maybe we find a different route, but it's just kind of like a no, like there's no other means. But I love Beth kind of putting it out there, being like, okay, so we do this. That fake money gets sent to the bank, and then we end up in jail. And Ruby's like, okay, so we got like a little snafu. We got to figure some stuff out. So she starts bringing food. The ladies are eating it. She kind of stuffs one of the bags because, like, they're going to use that to kind of put the, you know, uh, the money in. Because I'm all over the, um, because to kind of circle back, basically, once again, the whole plan was, like, to buy, um, this, the, uh, um, Gail's place, actually. And I love, like, Dean and, um, Beth sitting there kind of smiling, like, and Gail's kind of confused, like, okay, you're trying to buy this place? It's like, yeah. And it's just kind of like, I forget. I forgot I forgot the exact wording, but it was so good where Gail said something, and Beth is like, why wouldn't you? Like, basically, it's like, why? Because essentially, Beth was kind of insinuating, like, oh, you kind of step in other people's businesses and marriages, so why, you know? Like I said, I can't remember what the exact circumstances were, but it was like, Beth said something, and I'm like, I love Gail looking like, and she looks at Dean, and Dean's kind of looking like, Oh, even I was like, mm, this shit got awkward because it was almost Beth almost doing kind of like a neck roll. Like, bitch, I know what you tried to do. You all been oh, trying to get up with my husband and everything. And then I'm grabbing Dean hand and you're like holding hands and stuff like that. It's like, OK, so we're trying to offer you this much. And I love Beth being like, OK, so you got two options here. Either we pay you this amount of money and you get to just spend time with your family we keep this all to ourselves and then gail was like what's the other option it, you it's kind of very similar we pay you this amount but we're less private about it and basically your family hates you so those are your only options i'm like yo beth going all gangster right there a little because like I, like she's the one out of the trio that goes the most gangster like i mean she, she kind of almost thrives in this like this criminal world to a certain extent so but obviously, it's just kind of like she was hoping just to get her cut of everything from um, Rio, but Rio has other plans in play. In fact, he wants her to not only uh, print the money, he also wants her to wash it and then give him his cut. And then she kind of figures out, like, wait, this whole thing must have been a ploy. He knew that he knew the car wash wasn't really, like, the best option. So probably hearing that from, um, well, because he ended up talking about it later on, like, the IRS is up their asses and stuff like that. Um, so... For him, he was looking for another place to kind of diversify, like kind of n n use another place to um, launder the money. And so it turns into a situation of, OK, so because of that, like he wanted to see what Beth is doing. It's like, oh, what you're doing works out for you. OK, put my, I'm, I'm going to let you launder my money, too. So it's like and obviously that screws over Beth because for her, it's like this is supposed to be my operation to launder my money. And he's like, well, no, you know, you're laundering mine. So it puts her in this very compromised position because they don't really even have the business set up because they're trying to buy it right now. But obviously Dean wants Rio to have nothing to do with it. But Beth's plan is like, OK, when Dean can't do it on his own because of all his issues and stuff like that, like no one will give him the loan. So he'll obviously have to turn to me. And then eventually, you know, so kind of saying like, it'll kind of all work out in the end. But Dean is very adamant about the fact that he doesn't want Rio to have anything to do with this business. Granted, he tried to get loans and stuff like that. It didn't work out, but he still was like, I'd rather not have Rio involved. And obviously Beth respects that. It just, it makes her feel awkward because it's like, well, it's the thing of she needs this to happen. And even she's like, oh, the fact of the matter is I'm going to let Dean do this because he needs it to feel like a man and stuff like that. You know, they want to try and keep it separate. Like, we need this as a, a way of laundering our money. We need it to work out like this. So it's still that complicated thing of like they are working on a relationship and it, this could turn into a very nasty sap, snap food later down the road, which, you know, it will, in fact, turn into said nasty snap, uh, snap food. Um, but obviously, uh, Ruby is adamant about her plan and they enact it and, um, they're stealing from Sam, and then he's like, I gotta go, and go, I'll go, and Ruby's like, you can't go out there, and he stops and sighs, because he's like, what do you have planned? And then, like, basically, uh, Beth was inspired by one, her son's, like, science project about kind of starting a fire, so the point is to, like, put, like, the fake money in there in the bag, like, okay, it gets transported, but then it catches on fire and burns up, so that way there's no, like, illegal thing of, like, oh, here's some, like, that way there's no trail back to everybody about what's going on. Obviously, that'll work this one time. Doing that over and over again is not an option. So this gave them an opportunity now, but it won't be a 
thing possibly in the future. So, but when the time comes, like, you know, Ruby has paid him back. She got a new phone and everything. And he's like, oh, what are we supposed to be good now? And she's like, I did what I told you I was going to do. I'm going to pay. I paid you back. And she kind of like, I, I like her kind of getting snippy with him because she has every right to be because she's like, oh, because you don't want to, to uh, you know, runs everything now. He's like, I didn't want that. It's like, she's like, no, that's what you said. And he was just, you know, like, obviously he was upset and kind of said some shit he had no business saying. But I forgot uh, I'm, I'm, my, me and my terrible memory. Ruby said something super snappy towards him that I really like. I'm blanking and it bothers me so much. But essentially, Ruby was kind of like. Doing because for him, he's like, I want you to go back to the way you were, the woman that I married, and stuff like that. He's like, But for her, it's like, Us, you know, oh, you want me to like it doesn't matter. Oh, you want me to go back to my job selling donuts? You work back, you're at, you work at the mall and stuff like that. It's like, um, she's like, But slinging all those donuts ain't gonna like be enough to take care of our baby girl's medical bills. I remember what she said. She was like, But Paul, uh, Paul Blart, I'm sure he's gonna come and save the day and walks away. I was like, Oh, snap, I was like, That. I like that sassy ass response, dude. Kind of once again, it's just kind of like Stan was kind of out of pocket this episode. So I was like, I was kind of glad she got to put him back in his place a little bit with the Paul Blart joke and stuff like that. But it's just like it's just so interesting, like you know. Um, but what well, where where it ends up ultimately going is interesting because like he's like wanting to spend the money because for him it's like we're holding onto this money like it's going to like make up for like the sins we commit because it was supposed to be every time we do something evil let's put in this jar like the, and the money needs to be put to good use so he's like we're going to go to we're not going to go to church today we're going to take this money we're going to go enjoy ourselves but we're going to spend it and give it to the people who deserve it you know and even giving ruby the ring and like you know it's like last chance and she puts it on she's like it looks like a star and she's like oh it looks good and everything and she's like you already tried to return it didn't you? he's like yep and they were going to hose me down so that's why she, he he was kind of hoping for her to keep it because it's like he wouldn't be able to get the money back they paid he paid for it so but um yeah good to see that they're on good terms again because he's like no matter where we go he's like i'm sorry for what i said before he was like you're right and she's like i know i was right and he's like the fact is wherever we go i just want to make sure we go together and i was like oh that's sweet but i guess that's also supposed to intimidate oh if we go to heaven cool let's go together but if we go to hell uh, we're taking that trip to, together, you know, so I don't know. It was, it was still kind of an interesting, a sweet thing to be like, oh, we're back on the same page type of situation. Uh, there was that moment between Beth and Gail where Beth was kind of like, oh, okay, and here's this. And she's like, oh, dolphins. It's like, yeah, the kids love them and everything. And that, and did she, Gail kept pushing because she was like, why would you, why would you take, why would you like be willing to go this far for him? It's like, he's my husband. And it's like, yeah, but really, I mean, knowing what we were, what happened between us, like, why would you be willing to do that? And then she's like, unless he's done, I wasn't the first. And obviously she's pushing a button. And I was almost, there was also a part of me, it's like halfway, like, is Beth going to hit her or punch her or something? It's like, Beth just takes a check and walk away. And Gail's got this smug look on her face, like, ha, 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 I win. Middle fingers type of situation. Metaphorical middle fingers. But I feel like if she could, she could have been, she would have been sticking in, the, in that moment. But um, with the money they made for switching the cash out and everything, uh, she asked home dude that works for Rio, it's like, how did you steal all that furniture from my place? And he was like, I didn't steal it. She's like, but how did you do it? And then she robs Gail blind. And it's like, yeah, all the stuff is going. And then she, then Beth shows up and it's like, oh my God, what? You're all the, I came here, you know, wanting to buy bathtub uh, tubs. And it's like, oh, spa tubs. And they're all, they're none here. And she's like, well, how's this? It's like, and she looks at the number and Gail's like, we agreed on a number. She's like, yeah, but that was before. Like you had spa tubs in here, but now it's just an empty storeroom. So that's not really fair, is it? And it's like, you look at Gail and you kind of get the feeling she knows what Beth did, but it's not like she can prove it. And I don't know if she knows to really know. Once again, Gail don't know who she messing with um, type of situation, but it's like, oh, so she got the place at a lower price and everything before it had gotten to that after like the whole Gail and Beth confrontation before it led to an interesting conversation where like Beth is like back when you would we were cheating like would you have done it with Gail and he was like uh oh, I found this thing I was looking for she's like he's like oh man you look amazing she's like as answer the question would you have done it with her and basically he lays it out he's like she wears this perfume and she and he's like she's got a nice butt got nice boobs so he's like probably and she's like well Thank you for being honest. But I think it also helps because it's a situation of like, 
I mean, maybe this is me reading too much in it, but maybe Beth also looks at it as like, the fact is, if this is someone that would have been your type that you would have cheated on me with, the fact is you chose, to, I mean, for one, he told her the truth. He never told her about, it's like she found out about the one affair. It's not until like um, he talked to what's her face and found out about the other affairs that uh, Dean had had. You know, so at least this situation of like something happening he told her about it, but also the fact is, this is someone he probably would have slept with that he fought the urge to, so maybe there's something more to that, you know? I don't know. Maybe, Like I said, maybe I'm just reading too much into it. But then there's the whole situation of, like, Beth showing Rio the place and everything, and she's asking him, like... Because he's like, oh, would you, would you mind showing me, you know, maybe you can showcase one of these, like, spa tops to me or whatever. And she's like, oh, get a representative for it. He's like, nah, that's good. Like, that's how you get diseases and stuff like that. And she's like, when would this place be mine? And he's like, kind of like, what? You know? So it's like basically kind of not giving her an answer and just saying, next time you might want to empty the clip. It's like... Would have solved all of her problems if she had actually straight up just killed him. But now all they can do is wait because they're they're still being charged by the hitman. He's back on a schedule. But I even love that line of like, how many damn people does he have to kill in a week? Like, you know, which begs the question, is he actually killing people while he's not killing Rio? Is he all doing other jobs at the same time? It's a very busy man. Like, but obviously, like, uh, Beth can't really get in contact with, like, um, the lady that works at a store and everything, so it's like, what is he up to? They don't know. They just have to wait and see, hopefully, that he ends up putting Rio down. Obviously, not knowing they're being investigated by, like, the I At the time, I kept being, like, the FBI or something, but now I'm like, well, just because of In the, in the Dark has probably put it more in my head. It's like, considering who they are, they probably are... They are federal agents, but the IRS, they're probably, like, crime division of the IRS is probably what their whole deal is. You know, once again, because it's interesting to me, because, like, I mean, obviously, this has been a thing of the show the entire time, but there's also, like, the whole situation of in the dark, you know, uh, on the CW, kind of in a similar vein of laundering money and stuff like that, regardless. So there's all of that. And do you finally have said agent uh, jogging like, oh my God, hey, you did my nails. And Ruby's like, who the hell are you, lady? I was like, oh yeah, and she's jogging in place. Like, oh yeah, this lady, she's like Picasso with nails. And they're like, all right, cool, gorge, that's awesome. And she's jogging in place and they're sitting there like, oh, this is awkward. And she's like, so what do you guys celebrate? And they kind of look at each other and we kind of leave it there. But it's like, she's going to try and plant herself more and more in their lives to try and figure them out. Uh, obviously won't end well for her because they start nosing up in their businesses getting nosy in Rio's business and we know what happened to the last uh agent you know federal person that got in his business that being Turner and that's more so because Turner kind of lugged it over his head like your recovery and stuff like that was threatening to let you bleed out unless you helped him out so it might be a little bit different but also well, look at what happened to Lucy so bags the question you know what potentially where that'll go I mean who knows because uh, Rio might cut ties and be like, oh, that's kind of on y'all. That's Y'all drew that attention to yourselves. That's on you. I'm not going to help you out. Maybe this time you'll actually kind of do things like I told you to, but I'm not going to interfere. If it comes down to that, you're going to have to be the one to pull the trigger again. Beth, you did it on me, so why should this be different? So it might go down that lane. Maybe, maybe not. We'll ultimately have to wait and see where all this ultimately ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about to the next time we meet. Be happy, be safe. We'll like to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and good